What's this? Okay, we good? We got audio, everything's up and running. Thanks, so hey baby, how you doing? You sitting so patiently, being such a good boy. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? You're doing well. I'm great, I'm trying to find the tortoise. I have to go over to my baby sister's house and let their dogs out, they got a puppy and uh, neither of them are able to let the puppy out of the crate this afternoon. So I said, okay, sure, yeah, I can do that. Only problem was this is the only day in my way that I had available to really do any filming. So I figured I can just go over there and do yard work. Lord knows there's plenty of work that needs to be done in their yard. And they made the mistake one time of telling me that I have a free rate to do whatever I want in their yard. Turbo, you wanna go? You wanna go see Lou? You wanna go see cousin Louie? Yeah, that sounds like fun. You can go. Dogs can have a play date. Things are supposed to get pretty hot here pretty soon. So uh, need to get some things in the ground. I bought her a bunch of Dahlia tubers like a couple months ago and last time I was over there they were still sitting in the garage figured need to get those planted I it was also pondering the idea of maybe taking some of these banana cannons over there I need to pull them up I don't have anything that I can do with them really in my yard so Britt take them over there let them enjoy them they can have the Japanese beetles too already threw a banana clump in here that's been sitting by the gate for quite a while I'm going to be so happy for that to be gone they said they wanted it so they can have it. Now, just need to find the tortoise turbo. Where's the turtle? Where's your friend? Where is he? Wait, nothing? Usually he's so good about that. Where is he? Where's the turtle? Go find him. Where's your friend? Come on, let's find him. Oh, he doesn't know either. He's jumping around right next to me. It means he's, no, 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 no. Out, 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 out. Stay dry. Don't get wet. Don't need him sopping wet in the back of the car. Go ahead and get the extra water bowl filled up too. It's not supposed to be that hot today, like maybe 90, but that's still hot enough that I want to have two bowls. Where's the tortoise? Amazing how something so big can just vanish. They're very good at that. Oh, oh, there he is. There's Colby. Hey, Colbs, how you doing, bud? He's out having a nice walk, having a good time, checking things out. Want to go to your room? Want to go hang out in your pen for a while? Yeah, there's the turtle. Good job. You found him, Turbo. So good. Good job. Oh, they're so cute together. I like how I'm immediately personifying this situation as if they're best friends just because they've stood together for about six seconds so far. All right, come on, Turbs. Come on, we gotta go. Go ahead and get Colby. Come on, Colbs, come on. The tortoise, come on, go ahead. Let Colby into his pen so he can enjoy a nice day of safety. Not being able to run away and then, what was I saying, banana cannas. Spent a few minutes digging up these cannas and realized people might wanna know a little bit about digging up cannas and transplanting them. So here's what I just did. Middle of the day in summer, around 91 degrees, dig them on up, throw them onto some hot pavement that's bone dry. Guaranteed success. Yeah, no, don't do what I'm doing. Do it early in the morning, cooler part of the season's better, uh, generally before the plants are this big. Managed to get one nice root ball up and out sitting in that pot right there. Can't see my viewfinder. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. And then I have several over here that are just some roots that I'm gonna cut back and throw into the pot and take those over there. And no, not ideal time of year to be doing this, but it can be done as long as you have a nice chunk of rhizome there. I like to leave about a foot, maybe a little bit more of growth on there. Just cut it, provide some energy should that chunk of rhizome need it to get going. The main thing is that these stay very well watered and that they're never allowed to dry out. Well, I don't know about never, but not until there are some signs of new growth. Cannas don't really like to dry out much anyways. It's best to try and keep them moist regardless of whether you're transplanting them or what you're doing, right? Want to mention, these are not a healthy depiction of what you should be digging up and transplanting. The majority of these cannas back there, I just yanked them out of the ground and whichever one's had enough viable root with eyes on them, enough chunk of rhizome with some eyes and some roots, I figure may as well get those into the ground and see what happens with them. But typically it's best to get underneath the clump, lift the entire thing up, cut the whole thing back to about a foot tall, and then transplant. Unless you're doing a fall storage kind of thing. Well, even if you're doing a fall storage kind of thing, you don't want to be cutting up the rhizomes like this. It's just the way it worked out because I was yanking them out of the ground. Didn't want to dig up that entire garden bed to get a few cannas out. Gonna get that loaded up into the car, gather anything else I think I might need. Might need some potting soil. She's got a lemon tree that needs to be potted up. It's supposed to be like 100 degrees in a couple days. I don't think this is the right time to do that. I'm gonna leave the lemon tree more than likely. Probably not the best time to do any of this, but it, well, here we are. It's happening, it's fine. Okay, get this folded up with one hand. Not that hard to do. Shovel, bananas, cannas, anything else? 
The drill. Oh, the auger. I need to grab the auger a bit. And then, oh, the dog. Turbo. I need to grab the dog. You can head out and go do some yard work and watch the dogs play. Someone's excited. You can see Lou? Right here, cousin. Look, look at how beautiful this holly is at their neighbor's house. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> I'll show you the rest of it in a minute. Figuring out my order of operations here. I'm thinking I should probably unload the car first. I'm not going to open the gate once I have the dogs out. They have ridgebacks. They're fast. They run off. I'm not catching them. You so excited to see Lou? You can see your cousin. We have to be careful. Only about four or five miles from our home, but I swear it's like five deliverance out here. Oh, that didn't, I forgot to post the clip in the last video. So last time I was over here a couple weeks ago, I was watering their plants. They were in Italy and London and stuff. And there was a deer, I'll just roll it right now. I'm at my little sister's house to water her plants. They left the poison ivy, but I think it's poison ivy, going right by the spigot. Also, there's a baby deer lying right in front of it. What the freaking crap? I think it's alive. I can't really tell. I don't, what am I, what is it? Yes, it's breathing. I'm gonna go to the backyard and take care of the stuff over there and get away from this. Would the, is mama around? Are they like bears? Do I need to be worried? Yeah, I didn't know what to do about that baby deer. I just left it alone. Seemed like the best thing to do. Eventually it took off and its mom went running after it. It was fine. Okay, so you're going to have to not walk on top of the plants. Why don't you get out over here? Yeah, there you go. There's that holly. Isn't it beautiful? Nice big holly. Come on, baby. There you go. Now you hang out there because you're a good boy and I know you're not going to run away. You'll hang out with me. Not like Louie and Nalo. Not that it's a competition. Just saying. My dog's better. That's all. <laughs> okay. Hey, doggies. I'm gonna go get Nala. Hey, Nala, you guys, you remember her? She's gotten so big, such a big girl. Okay, okay, come on, outdoors, let's go. Let's go potty. She's a little bit afraid of Turbo, but they'll get used to each other. Go on, guys. Okay, well, she can't get out if you do that. Come on, Nala, come on, it's okay. Come on, good girl. Good girl, so brave. All that prep. Spent like a good 15 minutes loading up the car with things and I forgot to bring an extra camera battery. That's okay, I have a backup camera. It doesn't have a lot of juice in it, but it'll be fine. Hey, sweetie. In a minute, since we were over here, right? Look at the planters. Remember these spring planters? They were here and here. Are you guys getting along? That's good. Not that they don't get along, but she's terrified of Turbo. Don't. She's just a very timid dog in general. She's really coming around, doing well. So these were planted up with a lot of spring annuals back in April. And uh, the Supertunia Vista bubble gums are the only ones that are left in here and the alliums. There's some pansies still hanging out. The bulbs have been pulled and thrown into the landscape somewhere. I don't know where. Not sure. Not my house. Then I also snuck in a Colocasia <laughs> Maui Gold into the middle of each one of these. They make really good alert plants. Nice little warning plants that let people know when it's time to water. They wilt down and pop right back up. So for people who are newer to gardening, I feel like that's a, just a nifty plant to have. And it has helped them a lot kind of gauge when to water and how much to water these planters. The bubble gums, look at, they're so freaking huge. Also, all of this is new. It took a few weekends. It was a lot of fun work, fun project. None of this was here last time y'all were back here. Hey, Lou. Oh, oh, I know. Shadows, shadows. So exciting. There's the lemon tree brand new looking great and then there are what, three of the double pink knockout roses one here one there and one there those were in a plant haul video i picked those up and said those were coming over here and here there i got those planted the rest of this bed though could really use some work this is their first home they haven't lived here all that long this is how this was when they moved in i don't the four by fours weren't there and I don't think there was a grill just hanging out in the corner i'm certainly not one to judge about having some piles laying around the garden what I would ultimately, this isn't happening in this video, but what I would ultimately love to do back here that I think would just look beautiful would be to swoop this bed out kind of in a little circle, bring that back, but have the whole thing wider, probably out another, probably a good two feet. Bring that over here further and further and further until we get right around here, then swoop it out like so, bring it around to this corner, swoop it out like a ball that connects right around here, and then to take that down the rest of the way and then each one of these corners do a tailored juniper or anything that's evergreen easy to grow a nice tall and slender with boxwoods intermingled in here and over there and some russian sage easy to grow plants and that's their style and y'all know it's not really the way i do things <laughs> but roses shrubbery some texture more of a french formal 
kind of vibe is I think what they would prefer. Fun to think about those things, but that's not what's happening today. They did say I could do whatever I want back here, and I don't want to fully take advantage of that. I don't want to uh, destroy their trust, right? <laughs> Even though I think it'll be fun throwing some cannons and bananas out here. I don't know what to do with all this wood. This isn't my house, so I don't want to just go picking up stuff and tossing it places and making it their problem to handle later, but also I don't know when they said free reign to do what I want, what did they think I was gonna do? Just plant stuff on top of the wood over here? The grill too, that needs a new home because that's a perfect spot for a plant. That's gotta go. Not like away, but not right here. That needs a new place, but where would I? I don't know what to do. See, this isn't my house. I don't feel right about moving things around. I'm going to just sit back and look at all this for a few minutes, get the dogs to run around because they're just chilling. They need to burn off some energy. I want them to run around before it gets too hot out, which usually requires me running around in circles, being chased by the dogs to get them going. And then I'll poke around for some places to put these four by fours and start cleaning stuff up, get some plants in the ground. Okay, I think I have a plan here. It's also, it's like 20 minutes later, just figured I should throw it out there. I just spent 15 to 20 minutes trying to get a picture of the dogs sitting in the chair. It wasn't happening. At Turbo and Nala to listen, they sat and they were good for pictures, but Louis saw a shadow. He just, he wasn't having it. There's a shadow that he needed to look at. I'm thinking with the wood over here, they have a vegetable garden down there that they've, they don't want. They don't want to grow vegetables. There used to be a whole bunch of planters and raised beds over there that they didn't want. They tore most of them out. That's what's left. It still needs to be torn out. So I don't see why I couldn't just take the wood and extra bricks and put them over there. I think that'd be fine. I don't know what you're whining about. You're having such a great time out here and there's water and toys and such a baby. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Oh, hey Turbs, you wanna be my helper? Can I trust you guys to not knock over the tripod? I'm having some doubts about that and I'm a little bit apprehensive. Okay, I only, there's just one, I've only thrown one of them over there and like five wasps went flying out of the thing. I was about ready to say forget it, but there's only two more. I think I can probably throw them from far enough away that it'll be fine. Okay, survived that one. Oh yeah, cool, sandbags. That's, that's a normal thing to have sitting around the garden. <laughs> What am I supposed to do with those? Okay, I figured those can hang out with the four by fours. May as well put everything together that we don't need around anymore, right? Oh, oh, here are the spring bulbs. I could have sworn she told me she planted. <laughs> they're just, okay, that, that works too, I guess. They're sitting in soil and they're not desiccated, so so probably, no, I'm gonna put those in a dark spot in their garage and plant them in the fall. And of course, on top of not bringing an extra battery, forgot my camera umbrella and just walked off with this sitting in the sun. I think it's okay though, look at that. So much better. The soil is all compacted right here from where those sandbags were. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a turn, which I know there's always some controversy around turning soil. The thing is, if it's all compacted, you're not getting any oxygen or not getting much oxygen down into it anyways, then doesn't really matter. Should go ahead and turn it. Need air down there. I'm also going to pull the weeds. I don't really know where to put them. I guess I'll throw them with the wood over there in the old veggie garden. I don't really mind the clover when it comes up. Crabgrass is a different story, but it's easy enough to pull, so may as well get it up and out of there, right? I'm not going to try and make this look perfect. I don't have any mulch or anything to top dress this with to help prevent the weeds from coming back. Say the one thing about leaving the clover is that it is at least shading things out to keep other weeds that are much more obnoxious growing in here, but now it was gonna bother me. May as well get some of it up, right? I don't, what's with the, why are the bricks there? Not entirely certain what that's about. Or, you know, maybe it's because there used to be a rain barrel over here and when Louie was a younger puppy, I think he knocked it over and ran around and destroyed it. Maybe those were there to help support the old barrel. I'm not sure. Don't know, but this is that's what I'm doing with them. I'm not gonna rebury bricks. I don't even know if they wanna end up keeping those there, ultimately. As far as the grill's concerned, I don't know what to do with that. This is in my house. I don't wanna really move that around. They may actually use it. I don't think they do, but Maybe they do and perhaps that's where they want to keep it. I don't know. And maybe drastically overthinking most of this. This isn't supposed to be like a huge makeover. Just trying to get a few plants in the ground. What do I have to work with here? There's the banana cannas down there in the clump of bananas. I'd say the banana clump would probably be great to have in this corner right here just because there's a gutter situation going on up there where that gutter needs to be fixed from where the rain barrel used to be there. And until that gets fixed, this spot's going to be getting plenty of water. And there's just a little bit more sun right there. The cannas, 
they get pretty tall and I still have all those dahlias down there that may not do much at this point, but just makes sense to get them in the ground, right? So maybe the cannas, once I'm centered under the window, I think the, you know what, here's the problem. There needs to be one more of these roses. There's only three roses, so I don't have a center to work with. There should be another rose right there in this corner, and then I'd have a center to work with right there, and that would work much better with my brain that likes to work with symmetry. It's my own doing, the one who bought them the roses. Should have got them one more. Let's we'll do the banana cannas right here. I think this would be a good spot. You already know the soil's nice and moist over here, which those cannas will definitely appreciate. Very rich soil, too. Look at how dark that is. Feels a lot like bagged topsoil. I'm guessing the old owners probably filled this in with bagged soil because that's what this is looking like and feeling like. There's nothing wrong with using topsoil in your gardens on a garden bed. It's normally a good idea to add some compost and some other materials that have some grit and various sizes to them because it can be very muddy depending on where you live. Some people probably have great topsoil. That's not really the case here. Our topsoil is pretty muddy. It's dark, very clay-like and not great for an oxygen-rich environment but that should be okay for the cannas it, as soon as i come over here something in my hands you're gonna stand right for the camera turbo move 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 get out not that i'm saying cannas don't need an oxygen rich environment i just mean that they're often grown in bogs and ponds and marshes where the soil is going to be fairly similar to this the big difference though is that that soil generally almost always has circulating water in it if it's a pond that someone's planted up on their own, right? Just these sit there at an angle where they can lean against the house. Did not bring stakes with me, so that's just how that's going to have to sit. I'm just putting all these little cuttings, these rhizome chunks in here together because I figure this spot's going to be getting all that water together, so may as well keep them around, right? Yeah, that's good. That'll do. I think these will actually be very, very happy over here. All right, cannas are in. Remember, it's a transplant. It's not going to look great. And really, if you were doing this at home, you should cut those down to the ground by so they're like a foot above the surface of the soil. Only reason I'm not doing that is because I want them to be surprised when they come home and go, oh, wow, what is that? Try and get a nice size circle dug out here for those bananas. The ground is a little bit more solid over here, more clay, which is okay. There's still plenty of dark, nice looking material right above the clay. And that is a solid clump of bananas. They've just been sitting around for the last like, what, two months nearly? Hanging out on the pavement, just been splashing water on them occasionally. I thought that I turned the camera on and I had turned it off. It's okay, I just stuck the banana in the hole. Didn't miss much. There's also some bikini teeny colocasias in that root ball too. So that'll fill in this space very well. Oh, they're going to love that. Okay, those are in the ground. Figured I should take a moment, get in the shade just to cool the camera off. It's actually cooled off quite a bit outside. It's not too toasty, but the sun is strong. And when the sun's in my viewfinder, I can't tell if things are in focus. And if you've been watching the videos, you know the camera's been not that well behaved when it comes to focusing over these last few weeks. So I don't even know if y'all were even able to see everything I was just doing. Dahlias. Uh, it's definitely late to be planting these, but better late than never. They're going to do better if they get in the ground now as opposed to next year if they end up just sitting around inside of these bags, right? Appropriate time to plant the dahlias would be right around when you don't have to wear out frost anymore. I typically like to wait until I know the ground temps are in the mid to upper 60s just to avoid any risk of rot or anything like that, which is generally also where I live here in St. Louis, right around the same time as our last frost date. thing I need to check on are the heights on these 24 to 36 inches 18 to 36 inches 36 to 48 is that's an assortment who knows what's going to happen with those and then 36 to 48 so we have three big ones right 24 to 36 these three will go anywhere from two to four feet tall and then this one right here is going to be 18 inches to 36 inches tall since there's a bag of assorted ones here i don't really know how much planning i can put into where to put these other than to remember that the ones that are and this bag need to go further back to the wall because they could potentially get four feet tall. I need to remember that the pretty Lucy, that's this one right here, might need to be closer to everything. Okay, you guys are being ridiculous. The dogs have started to play this game where they just like to whine at each other through the door and then I open the door and they just stand there. Okay, and then which one? These, right here. 36 to 48, that's a good start. If it were me, I would want the taller ones right underneath my window. 48 inches on a dahlia usually means more like 48 
to 60 inches somewhere in there these have some growth on them they're okay are there actually three in here usually there's a few extras they get nope they're stingy just three one of these is much larger than the other two though so i may clump the other two together yeah, there are a couple weeds over here I need to pull too. You can't even see this. I don't know why I bothered filming planting this one. Well, at least now I have the video to reference back to on each side of the hose reel. That's the Lucille, right? Is that what that said? Lavender Perfection, not Lucille. So, okay, good thing I checked that. Great to be able to reference back to the video, but only if I actually give the right name of the plant. Okay, and I think you get it. I'm going to mix the assorted ones up and the other tall ones up in the back all along here and then do the shorter ones in the front, and that's it. Oh, no, battery's down to 12%. Here's the last thing that I should have mentioned when planting dahlias. I get this shot when it's not backlit. The pointy, droopy end down. Usually there's still a stem remaining on these that makes it a lot easier to tell what part of the tuber, there we go. So there's the old stem, that's where this was cut. That goes down, so all that down into the ground, pointing up this way. When in doubt, plant on their side. Then they start to put up growth and just lift them up and correct the direction that they need to go. And I normally try and get dahlias in the ground at a minimum of four inches. Four to eight inches is what I aim for when I'm working with them. So two shallows and can have floppy plants that don't stand up right and you have to do a lot more staking. With the ones that get over three feet tall, you usually have to do a lot of staking with those. This is good. Not a drastic transformation, but some new plants in the ground. <laughs> some plants out of my backyard that I didn't want anymore. And then there will be dahlias. I don't know if they'll have time to get to bloom. Generally, they need about three to four months. There's a good amount of sun and warmth over here against this brick wall. So the banana and the canna, neither one should need much as far as winter protection goes to come back. The dahlias, this is zone 6A, 6B. I have had dahlias come back for me when I have put a lot of mulch on top of them. So it's possible, but typically around here we plant them as annuals. But since they're being planted so late in the year, give them till frost to grow. I usually just let the frost kill them back. I don't know if that's really what you're supposed to, but that's what I've always done. Just left them with a fork, cut the old stuff off, clean off the tubers and put them someplace dark, cool and dry for the winter time. That's about it. Need to check on them occasionally because they can dry up and desiccate. I have had to spray or introduce moistened vermiculite to where I keep my dahlias and caladiums and some of my ginger corms. Oh, I really wish I had some mulch. I wish there was mulch. I want to top dress this so bad. They have a ton of pachysandra some spurge in the front yard and I've been tempted to go out there and steal some chunks from their front yard and plant it back here but I'm not going to do that because this really does need a heavy mulching help suppress the weeds I don't think it'd be smart to do that to put a ground cover in place I have to work the mulch around them I'd rather do the mulching first so yeah that's it that was fun looks good I'm going to water these in very 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 heavily and uh well there's probably not gonna be much else happening in the video but we can pick back up at the house the McDowell drained the fountain. Look at all, that's so foggy. I wouldn't normally use my shirt to wipe the lens, but I don't think I have time to wait for things to warm up for the glass to adjust. Okay, that worked out well. Maybe all these years I should have just been wiping the lens with my shirt. Okay, well, lesson learned. Used to keep a microfiber cloth in the pocket so I could just wipe it down, but you know, they always go missing and here we are. But I mean, the shirt, it's a dry fit, so that's basically the same thing. It's probably really annoying. I won't do that anymore, I'm sorry. I just came back out here and the fountain was empty. What happened there? And realized that the McDowell has been draining it. It has this leaf leaning on there. The water has been rushing down there onto the Gloriosum. See that? I think you need to move that over just a scotch. The Gloriosum is fine. It's in a self watering container with I poked holes in it, if you saw that video. So it has a constant overflow. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Can you hear it? You hear the thunder? and see clouds. Isn't it beautiful? Actually, a couple days after all that stuff in my sister's house, I thought I had filmed a lot more than I did. We did a lot of stuff. There's a good amount of filming, but what I mean is I thought that there was probably like at least 45 minutes worth of video, not what came out to be 22 minutes. So I hadn't really been vlogging the rest of the week, been letting my voice recover from that very long garden tour and just all the smoke and dry air. It's been and it's been hard to breathe out here. Nearly triple digit temps. It ended up not being as hot as they said it was going to be. It was still like 97, but yesterday it was supposed to be 102. And instead there was a storm like 10 miles north of here, but that cooled things off into the mid eighties and there was a breeze. It was actually a gorgeous day, which I'd wish I'd known when I got up at six o'clock in the morning and then spent four and a half hours drenching the plants, expecting it to be 
just crazy hot, I wouldn't have, I probably still should have done it because it was hot most of the day up until like three o'clock. It still got up into the 90s. I don't, just rambling at this point. Just, okay, all right, okay. I thought that was gonna be way more graceful than it was. Just trying to turn the hose off, jeez. Turbo's pouting, because I won't let him in the pool. You can't go in the pool, there's thunder. You can't go in there, baby, you might get shocked. Uh, good boy. Good boy, this will pass and we can go for a swim in a little bit. There isn't really anything left to do in the video other than some updates. Hey, the camera's autofocus is not really working, but when I push the button, something's kind of happening there. I don't know why. Sometimes I expect technology to just work itself out. That autofocus thing has been an issue for a little while, and it seems like it might be working itself out. I did clean the sensor. That could have something to do with it. So I spent the majority of my week, other than the garden tour and editing the garden tour, what you saw me do at my sister's house, getting drip set up because the I think the majority of the country here in the U.S. and not everybody's here in the U.S. has been expecting these extreme triple-digit temperatures and drought-like conditions. Some people are getting torrential downpours and storms. Eh, we may end up being those people. I don't know. I think they put us at a level three, that new, like, one, two, three, four risk thing they're doing for how bad your storms are going to be. When I came out here yesterday, the palm tree was laying over on top of the light pole. I'm really having trouble focusing right now. What was my point? Oh, I figured with those extremes, and I have a feeling July, probably going to be horrible as far as the heat goes. August might be the same. We're moving into an El Nino that they're saying is going to be a very, very, very intense one. Really need to get that drip up and going. So that's what I did all week long. It was a nightmare. There is one zone that's hooked up that apparently doesn't do anything. Some of this makeshift line sitting out from last year when the irrigation wasn't working i decided to just use that because a couple of these zones i don't even know what they go to it's been so long and i do things so differently now than i used to like in the beginning days when i was doing things with drip i would bury the lines and i learned within a year or two that was just dumb and a stupid thing to do don't bury your drip lines <laughs> unless you're very good at labeling things and keeping on top of the labels if the sun wears them out then maybe you know, might be able to label the ends of the hoses, but when you have the lines buried, you lose connection with what goes where, right? Because I always have, what, there's four drips just for this area and that area over there and some of what's next to me. And then the rest of the yard is all on one system that has six. It had eight. I managed to condense that down and get it to six ultimately i would like to get it down to two in each area by upgrading the tubing to one inch poly tubing that's not going to kink as much not going to need to be replaced as often and has more water pressure so i can get more plants watered at a single time but that's not what's going on right now the main thing is just to get things up on the drip because it's when you know how it is maybe you know how it is anybody who's experienced really hot just stupid hot summers such as you in texas right now i know it's horrible there but you'll get up and spend a few hours watering and then in the afternoon you have to do it again i don't i don't have time for that been doing that for several weeks now and i just said you know what let's just go ahead and set the old drip system up that'll help carry things through regardless though i've still had to water the last couple of days because the heat and that's probably just going to be the trend of the summer you have plants you gotta water them luckily i don't live in a restricted water area so that's good because we are in an extreme drought which is not fun and i did not plant accordingly for extreme drought because that's never been a thing that i can remember in may and june july when this video comes out any droughts we've ever had have been like august usually that's usually have a dry spell and kind of a cool off a heat up an extreme heat up and then an extreme cool off in august but not just hey it's spring and it's not going to rain that's very weird and bizarre to me but that's why the drip is good get the water right to the roots of the plant don't have to use as much of it and it saves me time so i'm happy that i got that for the most part done it needs some tweaking and like i said there's an entire zone that i don't know what it goes to <laughs> i have no idea I, the line's buried which was just dumb that's from like something i did maybe six or seven years ago i just think i'm gonna have to cut that line and start over and I, I can't figure out what's not getting watered so it doesn't matter right that means that that zone is irrelevant because from what i can tell i've got a drip head on top of everything so that's good hey turbo what you doing bud are you supposed to be in there right now what are you doing why are you breaking rules come on this is what he does he does it at nighttime too when i say no pool like in the middle of the night so you don't want to get wet so you can go to bed He'll very quietly walk down there and he sneaks in so quietly from down there. You're very tricky, Turbo. You need to get out. Turbo, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Turbo. 
Come on, no pool. Out. Yeah, and the water is bothering your ears. You weren't supposed to be in there today anyways. I'm trying to keep your ears dry. Breaking rules, being... I don't want to say the B.A.D. word, that's not fair. You're such a sweetheart. You're such a sweetheart. You're just trying to cool off. I think, I feel, uh, yes, I do. I felt a couple raindrops, that's exciting. Maybe we'll get some rain. That would be amazing. Everything is so dry and dusty. My throat feels like I've been gargling needles from just the junk in the air out here. And, uh, okay, well that's enough thunder. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. How much time as I just spent getting turbo out of the pool, I probably also shouldn't be standing out here right next to the pool with an electronic device in my hands and it's hopefully about to start raining. I really hope. I hope it starts raining. We need it so bad. Wash some junk away. I can only remember it raining one time since May. I think there was maybe a light drizzle, so maybe two small rains that didn't really add up to much of anything. At least not where I live. Like, it keeps going around my city, my county in the city, and just, we're just dry. The grass is brown, and so, hey, the garden's looking good, though, because of the Got the drip, that's pulling every, okay. Like I said, it's time to go. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Thanks for all the feedback, warm feedback on the garden tour that last three and a half minutes with all the slow motion shots and everything. I wasn't sure if I should include that or not. I'm glad I did. People seem to enjoy it. Thanks for that. I enjoy making those things. Don't give me that face. You can't get in there. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to y'all, look at that face. Also, I forgot to mention during the garden tour, I have some, some bad news about marmalade and it got hot and it sat there and it was behind some things. I forgot about it. R.I.P. Marmalade. Uh, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.